that's a free will. You freely give that to God. Amen. And it just hit me like an infinite. And I tell you, I, I just about had church going down the road with this song coming on. I was singing the chorus because it's the only thing that I knew. People's probably staring at me going down the road. But it just hit me like a ton of bricks. So I'm going to attempt to sing it, and I probably won't even get the tune of the song together. But just listen to the words of the song and just remember, you know, of all the stuff that you can do, your praise and your worship is the only just gift that you can just really give God because you give it freely. <clears throat> All my words fall short. I got nothing new. How can I express my gratitude? I can sing these songs as I But every song must end, and you never do. Amen. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response, I've got just one move with my stretched wide I will worship you so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah
We had the flood, the great flood. <laughs> All of my music got messed up, so I tried to put it in. <laughs> I've heard it said a man would swim the ocean just to be with the one he loves. All those dreams are an empty emotion, it can never be done.
20 years. I think that light being out is what makes it look different. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I love that song. We're not long after I got saved, we went to Columbus, Georgia to a youth conference. And uh, there was thousands of kids in there. And that song, they played that song, they had a big old screen up there and they played that video for that song and to hear a thousand kids singing that song uh I, even after all these years that's something i've never forgot man i mean just standing there and crying in the presence that was awesome uh, so i've always loved that song uh, it's good to know that jesus loves us that much hey man all right you got your bible tonight go to the book of joshua uh it's getting that time of year. Uh, this year's ending. New Year's coming. Y'all knew I was going to whoop out a New Year's message on you at some point. Amen. <laughs> Starting early this year. Uh, you know, I always like to kind of look at what we're coming out of and, and, and kind of look ahead to where I'm going. The Bible says without a vision, a man will perish. Uh, I believe we should have a vision of where we're going. Uh, sometimes, Chris, I just like to kind of stumble around, go with the flow, whatever you want to call it. But uh, most of the time, I want a vision of what uh, can be accomplished. Uh, yeah. And not just for me, for the church, for the people I work with, for my family. Uh, so, but you know what? Sometimes uh, that involves us getting ready. Amen? Uh, we all like for God to do everything. Can I get amen? Amen. Hey, man, I like it when I ain't got to do nothing. I just kick back, and uh, God moves in a mighty way, and he does everything, Josh, and I'm blown away, and I'm like, whoo, way to go, Jesus. But when he expects me to do something, hey, man, see, they'll get on TV, and, and, and y'all y'all think, man, he hates him some TV preachers. No, there's some good ones out there. Uh, there's, there's a lot of bad ones, too. Hey, man. And they'll get on there, and, and they'll... they'll Put it out there in a way that I ain't got to do nothing, Sean. God's an ATM. I can give brother so and so ten dollars, and God will give me a hundred. That's a sweet deal. I'll take that all day long. Who do I make the check out to? Yeah, come on. All I got to do, Chris, is this, and and God knows. Sometimes we got to do stuff. Amen. I, 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 I use a four letter word up in, in here. Nobody wants to hear it. It's it's work can't use that four letter word in church but sometimes I have to do my part see a covenant how many people in here has got a covenant with God if your name's wrote in the book of life if you're saved you have a covenant with God you're entitled to some stuff uh, God said he'd do some stuff but guess what he expects you to do some stuff that's like when I bought my house I went down to the bank they didn't say okay we're just going to give you this money. It's yours. You live there. God bless you. That would have been sweet. But they said, no, we're going to give you this money, and you're going to get to pay it back. And as long as you pay it back, you get to live in your house. I said, okay, I'll take that deal. And I'll never stand up here and say, you've got to earn what Jesus did. You ain't got to. Amen. He done all that. All that's already been done. But if I want certain things, there's certain things I got to do. Amen. Amen. Now a lot of people don't want to hear that. They want that uh, recliner, Jesus. If that's what you come looking for, uh, just go ahead and put your fingers in your ear, hum, go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do, because this ain't gonna be for you. Amen. Hit thumbs down on the little emoji thing at the bottom of the. You know, I, I look at the, the the YouTube messages and all that. I'm still waiting to get my first thumbs down. One of y'all go home and do it just about it. <laughs> Amen. It's coming. That's when I know I've made it. <laughs> Amen. All right, you got your Bible. Uh, I, I like to say I'm glad to be back tonight. It's good to be back in our church. It's good to have our first Wednesday night service in over two, what, it's been over two months. Uh, so, hey, I'm glad to be back. Too long. Too long, Yes. You don't realize, I, I, I see me and Josh was talking, was it today or yesterday? 
I said, it reminds me of the old Cinderella song. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Amen. Uh, I hate to, but I mean, hey, that's what came to mind. But uh, I even found myself singing that a little bit. Didn't sound as good as Cinderella. But ain't got as much higher anymore either, right, Josh? So, all right, if you got your Bible, go to the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 3. Uh, I say it all the time, very familiar uh, scripture, very familiar story. Uh, I'm going to get into this, but there's there's one part uh, that I'm going to I'm going to hang on right here. I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, beat it in you because this is where I believe we need to get. How many people's got a vision for the next year already? I do. Amen. I do for the church. I do for my family, for my kids, uh, for my job, for everything. So, and you know. Uh, Sometimes we have to sow into that. We have to work for that. We have to do our part. Can you get anybody? I'm trying to beat that in. It's kind of like going to the gym. How many people have, how many people have ever signed up for the gym at the beginning of the year? I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do this. You go to the gym, and you have to wade through them for about the first month. Then you'll never see none of them again. Because you're like, man, this, this ain't as easy as they make it look on TV. Yeah. That dude on the hydroxy commercial, I mean, man, he took two of them pills and didn't even change his eating habits. He lost 20 pounds, got a six-pack. What, what am I missing? And not the six-pack a lot of people think about. It. I'm talking about abs, not in the refrigerator, right? Yeah. All right. I better go on. I'm getting out in left field here. Chapter 3 of the book of Joshua. Everybody there? Amen. And Joshua uh, rose early in the morning, and they removed uh, from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after the three days that the officers went uh, through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. There's something to that if you'll go back and read it. Uh, sometimes you're going to go somewhere you ain't never been before. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to know how to get there is to follow God. Amen. Hey man, all of us has woke up, found herself in places, lost somewhere. But how do you get back? How many people in here, and they can't see you, so you ain't telling them yourself. The only one they can see that, that's uh, sorry uh, is me. So. It don't matter. How many people in here, since you know God, have found yourself somewhere you weren't supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Amen. All of us. Amen. If you ain't got your hand up, you lying. Hey man, you found yourself right now. But how how do you get back? You gotta find the one that knows the way. Amen. That's what I like about Jesus, Chris. No matter how bad I get off, how far I get off, I told a story Sunday morning about how I got mad at God and, and, and told him I wasn't doing nothing anymore and I wasn't preaching and I wouldn't listen to him. I sat on the couch, Josh, and I didn't go to church, I didn't go to Sunday school, didn't pray, didn't read my Bible. Didn't do nothing. I told God I'm out. He said, No, you ain't. It took him three months before he said anything. <coughs> but he come back. Why? Because he had a plan. Amen. Why? Because I meant that much. Why will he come back to you? Because you mean that much. Because there's something. The Bible says if he started something in you, he'll finish it. Amen. Amen. God ain't no quitter. And I'm glad he won't let me be one either. Amen. Even when I am sold up. But see, sometimes we got to go somewhere we've never been before to get to where God's trying to take us. Amen. Amen. Remember back in the old days when you took a trip? Now, this was before the Garmin and, and, and the Tom Toms and the phones and, and all that. Uh, anybody remember Map Quest? I'm going back, son. Yeah. I'm going back. You had a stack of paper that high to get to Cage Cove. Remember that? And you'd be, you had to have a navigator. Somebody read it. 
Whoa, whoa, take a left, you missed it. You have to turn around and, and backtrack. You ever feel like that with God sometimes? That you're lost, that you don't know where you're going because you're going somewhere. What about the first time you, and I use the singers a lot. What about the first time you ever sung a song in church? Did you just jump up and go for it and get the mic? Thank you. Glad to be here tonight. No. Sean, the first time that you got the privilege, what you was talking about, to go teach a class, uh, did you jump up there like you had a Ph.D. from Harvard <laughs> hanging on the wall? Ready? No. Man, first time, yeah, the first time you ever preach a message, you don't jump up there and, and expect Billy Graham stuff to be dropping out everywhere. No. You're somewhere you've never been before. Mm -hmm. And until you realize that you've got to follow the one that knows the way to get you through it, you're not going to get there. Amen. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. In other words, get ready. Get yourself ready for what God is about to do. Amen. If you come tonight for an earth-shattering message, for that's it. Amen. That's what God has laid on my heart to come and tell the church tonight. Amen. To tell everybody sitting here, to tell everyone who will turn this on. If they don't turn it on, I guess it's for them. If they ain't sitting here tonight, it wasn't for them. If it was, they, they would have been here. But I come to tell y'all, I come to tell myself tonight that we need to begin to sanctify ourselves to get ready, amen, to go and possess what God has in store for you. How many people, hey, I come tonight to make somebody happy, amen. Uh, how many people tonight believe that God has more in store for you than what you have right now? I ain't talking about money. Don't go home. Yeah, give him some praise. God's always got more in store. Now, don't go home and jerk open, uh, lay out of work tomorrow and open the mailbox waiting for that million dollar check to be there. Because more than likely, uh, you're going to be broke without a job, amen. But I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about in your teaching, in your preaching, in your singing, in your walk, uh, in your marriage, in your job, in everything that pertains to it. Amen. We got to get ready to receive what God has in store for us. Amen. How many singers in here believe you can sing better in this new year? Hey, how many teachers in here believe you can teach better? I'm getting somebody's hand up in a minute if it's just mine. How many preachers in here believe you could preach better? I ain't talking about longer, amen. Y'all say amen on that. I don't need to preach longer. But every year I tell myself I want to portray Jesus better this year, God, than I did last year. Amen. I want to show the love of God. I want to show what God... Hey, you can't just have the love without having the other part, amen. Nobody wants to hear our side of it. I just want to hear how good Jesus loves me and I can go back out there and live like hell the rest. No, I ain't going to tell you that. I'll tell you how much Jesus loves you, but I'll also tell you there's a way you got to live. We got to get ready. It's kind of like, how many people got a freezer, a deep freezer? Mm -hmm. Yours is probably like ours. There's some vegetables in the bottom of that thing, Sean. Ain't seen daylight since they left Walmart. <laughs> Amen. Yep. And the only way you ever get to that is one, one or two times a year when you clean the freezer out, right? Y'all do that too? Uh -huh. We'll have six garbage bags. I got more vegetables in the farmer's market. Amen. In them garbage bags going. Ain't ever meat. It's always vegetables. But if I don't, what happens? I'm getting some more. Y'all just bear with me. I ain't telling y'all how bad my freezer is. What happens if I never clean the freezer out? You're going to run out of room. What if I want some Brussels sprouts? But I ain't got nowhere to put them. If we don't get ourselves ready, say, I'm coming back. Y'all bear with me. If we don't get ourselves ready, sanctify ourselves then what are we going to do to get more? Amen? What, what if you said, and this may just be me too, how many people in here got some stuff you need to get rid of? Amen. 
How many people in here got some space in your spiritual freezer, amen? Old bag of vegetables needs to be thrown out. Amen. Every one of you. If you like me, I probably got about half to three quarters of a freezer full. Hey, just be honest. But what if, what if I went in there? I ain't talking about your freezer. Now, you can go home and clean your freezer out. I'm moving on from the freezer. That's just a, a, a whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there you go. Metaphor. I remember that. I'll make a note. I'll use that word next Sunday. <laughs> but what if you could remove one thing out of your life right now, your walk with God? That would free up space to allow you something else. Come on. Amen? Get rid of something you don't need to make room for something you do need. Because let me tell you what. We, now, I know me and Chris raised our hand when it said before we wanted to preach better. I don't know about the singers or the teachers. Uh, I don't know if y'all wasn't paying attention or y'all just good. Uh, we're going to leave it there. But before I can preach better, Sean, than I am now, God ain't got to change. God ain't got to change nothing up in heaven or nothing he done in the beginning to make me better than what I am now. And hey, you better believe the only reason I'm standing up here is by the grace of God. The only reason I can preach God's word is because he gives it to me. But you know what? I still got to read. I still got to pray. I don't just bust in here every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, and say, well, God, I've made it, man. Hit me with something. He goes, here you go. But what if? What if we begin to sanctify ourselves, get ourselves ready? right now and remove those things and allow room for something new to come in. How many people like to have something new in your walk this year? Amen. New in your spiritual life this year? Mm -hmm. Have you got room for it? Amen? Are you sitting around waiting for God to do it? Now I talked about cleaning the freezer. You know what? I don't do it. Jeannie does. I know Chris when I come home Trash cans are full outside. Yeah. Had to get somebody to spot me to drag a can out. I open the freezer and I'm like, dang, where did that chrome thing go? Oh, that's the bottom. See, God takes some stuff from us. Thank you, Lord. But some stuff, we got to give up. We got to give it up. How many people in here, be honest, say, I got at least one thing I ain't giving up. Amen? We pray about it. We go through the motion. Yeah, Jesus, if you don't care, take this. Remember when you was a kid, you cross your fingers because that made it didn't count. Amen? We pray with our fingers crossed. I'm lying, Jesus. No. What if, what if I got rid of that where I could replace it with something that would be more beneficial? I hope everybody in here, I hope if you sing, you want to sing better every time. I hope if you teach, you want to teach better every time. I hope if you preach, you want to preach better every time. If you don't, I'll be checking something. Amen. When you sing a song, when y'all sing a song, you want to impact somebody? Mm -hmm. You want somebody to feel what you're singing? Mm -hmm. That's, the only That's the only reason. I don't preach just to get up here and talk. I can do that at work. Get paid for it. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to know how good Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want somebody that ain't got hope to have hope. I want somebody that ain't got peace to have peace. I want somebody that's like I used to be to realize that God is good enough to come and get you wherever you're at and he can do whatever he wants with you regardless of what anybody else thinks. Amen. But if I ain't got room for it, where's it going to go? Mm -hmm. You ever not bought something? Because there ain't room for it. I'm the world's worst. When I was a kid, hey, and my mom and dad, they done the best they could. I'll never, mom and I had a good mom and dad. But you didn't go in there and make a sandwich. They wouldn't pop tarts and cereal. I'm just, hey, I'm, I'm serious. We's poor. Not as poor as I tell my kids. Uh, <laughs> but, so I got a bad half. I go to Walmart, I'm getting it. 
Chris, I don't care if I got four boxes of cereal. We about to have five. I'm serious. And, and Jeannie says, I'm like, you, you buy all this stuff. You buy this stuff. Because I want it. I like to walk by there and look at that pantry full of food. You know, if I want a Pop-Tart at 3 o'clock in the morning, Sean, I'm going to get one. If I don't want what she cooked, I'll make a sandwich. Because it's my house. See, we got to have that room. You've got to have room to put it. Amen? Get yourself ready. We want God to do all the work. We want somebody else to do all the work. Just like the freezer, I want Jeannie to clean it out. Amen? We expect God, I mean, maybe it's just me, we expect God just to come down and take everything out that we don't need, right? Yep. We pray for God to take it. Sometimes God's waiting for us to give it up. Amen. Sometimes God's waiting for you to lay it down. Because, mm -hmm. hey, sometimes we try to get rid of stuff that we need. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will do wonders among you. Amen. Till we get ready. Until they got ready right here. Now he's telling them they're fixing to go to Jericho. They're fixing to fight a great battle. They're fixing to go up against something and that there's no hope. Imagine uh, fighting the great uh, day. They, they said the walls are so thick on that thing that two chariots could race side by side around the top of it. And God's telling you to walk around it and say nothing. Amen? But see, if they had not took the time, it goes back to this. We like to go to the story of that. How they walked around and then when they blowed the horn there on the seventh day and things fell over and they went in there and killed them all and took all their stuff. But it goes back to getting ready. He said, y'all got to get ready before you get there. See, if, if we need to take anything as a church, as a body into this next year, we need to be ready when we get there. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to be ready. You don't know when you're going to meet somebody that needs something. Uh, only God does. Amen. We pray and ask God to allow us to do great things, and you never know when that great thing may be somebody at Walmart that you witness to. Amen. And if we don't know what we're talking about, if I'm too busy screaming at some woman for stealing my parking spot, <laughs> amen, I might miss it. We got to get ready. Sanctify yourselves. You need to get yourself ready. Mm -hmm. See, the, there's a lot of nowadays that we, even in this world and even in church, people are not responsible for their own actions. I act like this, Josh, because Mama didn't love me enough and Daddy didn't hug me. And No. You get to an age where you're responsible for yourself. That's like my mom and Daddy. I said I love them, but they done stuff when I was a kid that I didn't like. And I didn't say nothing because they had a bike handed me. But then when I got old enough, Chris, and I moved down and I got my own family and my own kids, I don't have to do that stuff that I don't like. Amen. You can change it. See, how many people in here, you don't like the way certain people sing? Go ahead and be honest. They're one of you. Hey, some gospel songs I hear it, and I'm like, dude, they just butchered that thing. Hey, man, what is that? You don't like how people, certain people preach. Some people don't like hacking. Some people don't like people that preach for an hour and a half. Some people don't like people that make jokes. I've heard people, you shouldn't be laughing. Why not? God had a sense of humor. Look at me. Hey, man. I mean, come on. He uses all kinds, but you know what? We have to get ourselves. That's only, Chris, I'm the only one I can get ready. I can't make you ready. I can't fix you. I can't tell you what you've got to do, but I can me. I know what it would take for me to do a great thing. How many people believe there'll be something, great battle or great victory within this next year that you'll go through? Every one of you. God, God's got something great in store for every one of us. And greatness is always in the eye of the beholder. To a lost man, greatest thing in the world is to get saved. We don't know what it is. To somebody that's never been loved, uh, the greatest thing to them in that moment is to be loved. 
But if we're not ready, if we don't get ourselves ready, amen? How many people in here, and, and I, like, I like my audience participation. I like you know I'm talking to you. That way you can't believe somebody else is here to hear it. How many people get up every morning just on fire to go to work? Woo, can't wait. I'm getting there two hours early, Chris, just because anticipation. That's me every day. Yeah. No. Hey, some days I'm like, Jesus, you better get me up out of this bed. I ain't going. I hate that place. I hope it ain't there when I get there. Right, y'all? Like it, really? Yeah. But what do you do? You get up and go. You ever have to sit out in the car on the way to work sometimes, give yourself a pep talk? Mm -hmm. Amen? Pray, 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 pray. Mm -hmm. I'm not praying for, the, the, for everybody there to be good. I'm not praying for everything. I'm praying for me to be ready when I get there. That's how we got to do here sometimes. You got to get yourself ready. Amen. I've heard people, I've heard people my whole life, I didn't feel nothing there. That's your fault. Mm -hmm. I didn't get nothing out of that. That's your problem. Amen? You didn't come in looking for nothing. You didn't get nothing out of it because you didn't put nothing in it. Amen? Yeah, come on. Amen? You, that's the only way you don't get nothing out of it is you don't put nothing in it. Amen. Sometimes it may be the worst service you've ever been in. And sometimes it may be that, Lord, I wish I would hurry up where I could go home. What happens when you put something in it? That's your fault. It ain't theirs. I mean, you've got to get yourself. Sanctify yourself. That's my message. I, I, I know it's like beating a dead horse, but I'm hoping you're getting it. Amen. You, you have to sanctify yourself. He come to the people right here and go ahead and read the rest of the story. He said, hey, God's about to do all the rest of it. You just got to get ready to do what God... Hey, think about that. They went to Jericho, and I, I ain't going to read it all. They walked around it. God said, hey, uh, this is the order it's going to be in. The priest's going to go. They're going to carry the ark. The priest, uh, y'all just going to walk around. Don't say a word. Now, if God told all of us to go seven times around something and shut up, most of us wouldn't make it. <laughs> Amen. I mean, think about it. You're walking around. <laughs> Come on, Chris. You better watch it now. <laughs> They're walking around this wall. And you know all them people. In my mind, I see this. Hey, man, you see these idiots walking around the wall out here? Word. Let's go see them. Right? I mean, think about it. They all get on top of this big, huge wall, and there they are walking. Don't you look at that bunch? Walk some more. That's why God said, shut up. Don't talk. Because all you're going to do is start arguing with them. All you're going to do is get mad at them. You're going to start cursing them back. And for long, your mind ain't going to be on what I told you. See, they had to get themselves ready just to obey God. This year we have to get ourselves ready to obey God. And sometimes, oh, I'm preaching to myself. That's just shutting up. Jenny gets on me all the time. I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to listen. I said, you better shut it up. No. <laughs> That's when I go 16, 11 King James on her. No. Uh, sometimes that is with God. We've got to get ourselves ready just to obey what God's already told us to do. Because he's already got it figured out. Amen. How many times you sit, and be honest, I ain't going to make you raise your hand, you get the point. How many times we sit and worry and try to figure out how we're going to do something or, or this or that, how something's going to go when you don't need to. Amen. How many times you ever talked to yourself out of singing? How many times you ever talked to yourself out of preaching? How many times you ever talked to yourself out of testifying? Or praying for somebody, or calling somebody, or texting somebody. Everybody in here, right? Mm -hmm. I would sing that song, but she <laughs> sings it better than I do. That's her song. You ever heard people say that? That's her song. Mm -hmm. Oh, it ain't she on the copyright? <laughs> I used to be, I used to be the world's worst. Sean, I look and, and Lord be getting, trying to get me to preach something. I'd be like, I preached that before, <laughs> right? You ever done it? And, and, and I'm like, I don't care now. I preach the same message 15 times. Don't care. But if we got, you got to get that in your head. Sometimes we just got to get ourselves ready 
and shut up that we can do what God wants us to do because he's already got it figured out. See, all they had to do was walk around the wall. That was it. He done all the work. He, called, he made the walls fall down. But they had to get ready to do it exactly like God said. This year, what if we went ahead and started getting ready? To do it, here's the key, just like God says. Amen? Not like we want to. You ever try to throw your two cents in on God? <laughs> Amen? When I do make notes sometimes, sometimes I try to put my own stuff down there. Man, that's good right there. You get done preaching, you ever got done preaching, teaching? God, I, wish I should have said this. No, you shouldn't because that was you, not God. That's why you didn't remember it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Most of the time I'm talking, I'm, I guess I'm talking to the preachers and the singers tonight. Well, we got to get ready. You're in it too, John. <laughs> You're head of the deacon board. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if, if we get ready and just do what God says, what if we said this will be the year that I'm just going to do what God says? Mm -hmm. And Sean, I don't have to figure it out. Amen. I, I, I've always been glad that I don't have that Baptist gift to see when God's dealing with somebody. When the light shines on him, I guess, and he knows there's, I don't want that. What if we didn't worry about that? What if I preached to everybody like they needed Jesus? What if we sung what God told us to, regardless if you sung it last Sunday, regardless if you know the words, regardless if it's off key, mm -hmm. if you have to stop in the middle of the song and Google it, who cares? Mm -hmm. What if you testified when God told you to? What if you testified to the goodness of God when God told you to? What if you didn't have to think about it? What if, what, what if we were so ready to act on what God would have us to do but we just did it. Amen. What would it be like? It would be like this. He said, hey, you're about to see something great. But you've got to get yourself ready. You've got to sanctify yourself to receive it. Because God's always ready. I believe God gets up every day if God sleeps. My God takes a nap. Amen. That may be, I just this in my head. You can do whatever you want. I believe God gets up every day, Sean, with greatness in his mind. Greatness every day. Now, sometimes my definition and God's definition of greatness don't line up. Because I look at it through worldly eyes. And God sees hearts. And he sees what greatness is to each one of us. What if this year we decide that we're going to get ourselves ready to be obedient to God? That we just do what he says. Amen? Amen. You want a word for this coming year? There it is. Sanctify yourself. Don't worry about your brother or sister. Oh, I'm sad again. Don't worry about your brother or sister. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Everybody look around. Don't worry about who ain't here. Don't worry about them. I ain't nothing to you. The Bible says, Who am I to judge another man's servant? To his own master he'll answer. In other words, that's God's kid. You leave him alone. Amen. Amen. That's like my kids. If you see them doing something wrong in here, you can come tell me. I'll take care of it. If you go over and put your hands on them, man, you're going to have trouble. Amen. I mean, think about that. You don't, you, you say, hey, and that's the way it is with God. Don't worry about it. That's his kid. Ain't none of your business. If they ain't here, that's between them and God. Amen. If they don't sing, that's between them and God. You just do what you're supposed to do. Think about them when they was walking around that wall. They wouldn't, none of them turn around looking behind them wondering, wondering what so-and-so's doing back there. No, because if you'd done that long enough, you started talking. Hey, Amen. That's why I told them to be quiet. Because all it takes is one. Mm -hmm. Don't be that one. Don't be that one. What if on the Sunday, and we never want to look at it this way, but think about it. What about on the Sunday you're supposed to sing that song and you don't do it? There's somebody here that needed that song. That song was their sign. That song was their answer prior. Amen. Amen. Think, we don't think about it that way, but you know what? 
You never know, but God does. And if we just make up our minds, get ourselves ready. I love my wife. I love my kids. But you know what? On Sunday morning, I don't have to get them ready. To come to church, I don't have to go in there and say, well, Jeannie, come on. It's Sunday morning. It's, it's church time. Nope. She knows it's church time. And if I don't come, I bet she will. And if she don't come, I will. Unless we're in Florida. <laughs> Amen. All right. Anybody got anything to say or do? May not have been earth shattering. May not have been what you come for. That's what you got. Amen. Hey, we got to get ready.